So today we're going to go through um, how you'd create a, go about creating a project in Gorilla. So there are lots of support materials on the Gorilla website, so it made it really easy to guide you through each individual step of a process. But what I thought I'd do is outline sort of start to finish how you'd approach getting a project up and running. So assuming that you've signed in, so make sure you contact James Bartlett to get a Arden University login to make sure you get added to the department license. Um, and once you have that, you'd be able to start collecting data um, from an unlimited amount of people potentially. But then in order to get things started, you go on to when you've logged in, home and then projects. And the first thing that you need to do is create a new project. So today we're just gonna call it Gorilla Test. And this is really the backbone of how to make an experiment in a gorilla. So we've got our individual tasks, tasks and components that will come under tasks and questionnaires. Um, and then we can put that together into an experiment. So to start off, one of the handy things about gorilla is you can save materials from an experiment. So what I've done is if we go into the menu and open materials, um, if researchers want to share their materials from an experiment, they can do so. What I've done is used it to share some um, ethics document templates. So when we collect data, it's really important that you abide by ethical principles. So what I've done, we have a series of approved ethics templates at Ardham. So I've created some templates that we can uh, clone each time you create an experiment to save you some time and all the formatting is already set out. So because we've created a project, we need to clone each one of these. So within Gorilla, a really nice bit of functionality is you can clone these different types of components uh, so you can reuse them, edit them for your own experiment so you don't have to start from scratch for everything you want to make. So we'll start off with the information sheet. So if we clone that, it will give us a list of our projects that we've made. So if we hadn't created one already, you can create a new project, but because we already created the test uh, and you can rename it, so we don't need the Arden University part, so we can just take that out and we just want it as the information sheet and OK, which will open it within our project. So if we was to start editing this straight away, we could do. Um, in order to do this, we'd have to click on edit. And we've got the Arden logo and then we've got all the different types of text within that. So I've created this as a template. So there's a number of things that you'd when you'd start to use this yourself you would need to delete. So there's a warning on this as a template and all the things that you need to replace yourself are highlighted in bold. So we've got your researcher's name, so you, um, your title of the study, different purpose, benefits, etc., etc. going through. So all the bits you need to add are highlighted in bold and we use it through this rich text component. So when you're creating different questionnaires within Gorilla. Um, it's laid out like this. So we've got different widgets. So one of them is an image component, which we use here, and one is a rich text component. So this uses something called Markdown. So this is a like a text formatting system. So using these symbols, so two hashes, it creates like a title. Um, and we need this to add the different elements that we can use here. But if you need a guide on how to use Markdown, you can uh, click it here and Gorilla have got their own sort of support for how you can use a different markdown dot, different markdown commands in here. So for example, we've got one hash and it creates a big title, two hashes, it's a subtitle, three hashes and so on for different levels, how you can make text bold in italics. So if you need to, some support, there is that here. So for the time being, just because this is a demo on how we how we need to use it, we're not going to add any changes. But if we were, um, you'd need to commit them. So Gorilla uses version control, which means if you create a, um, a change and you wanted to go back on it, you could open a new version and you wouldn't lose all your progress. Um, so for each uh, version you'd commit, so you'd click on commit add a description of everything you've changed since the last version so you can keep up to date with what's happened. But because we haven't changed anything, we're just gonna cancel those. So we've got the information sheet, but we need two more. So a little bit annoyingly, we have to go back 
into open materials, back into the ethics documents, and we go to the next one, so the consent form. So again, we need it into the test. Take the Arden University out. And again, this has less to change. So within the consent form, it's really just your aims, your name, um, your supervisor, those kind of things. And then we've got a box that people can tick. Um, this is what it will appear like, but so people can provide their consent. But we're not, we're not wanting to change anything just now. And the last one, we go into open materials one more time. And we need to clone the debrief sheet. So the last thing we present to all the participants. So we've opened that one more time. So if we now go into our project, we have the three components that we've already cloned. So when we do this ourselves, we could go in here, edit it, edit it to our own um, our own demands that you want to do for your for your experiment, your project. Um, but for the time being, we're actually going to leave them as there is for templates. We don't need to worry too much just this demo. And for the next thing you need in experiment is you typically want to ask participants a few questions, uh, a couple of questions. So if you wanted to create one of these from scratch, uh, within the project page, there is the create button. So if we go into here, we've got different types. And the main ones you're going to be using is for the tasks, the so questionnaire and the task builder. So we're going to go into questionnaire and we're just going to ask some brief demographic information. So if you used to uh, design a study, you want to know a little bit about your participants, you just want brief demographics questionnaire. So we're creating the individual components. So whereas the template had some uh, preset things like the image, uh, the different ethics information, this is starting from scratch. Uh, the backbone to creating different questionnaire components in Gorilla is adding these different widgets. And it will give you a list of lots of different options that you can ask people. Uh, so some of them don't have really intuitive names. So for example, radio buttons is what we would need to ask people um, different categories of questions. So if you, yes, no, um, sort of three or more responses and people can just tick which one applies to those. So for example, um, what is your gender? So within this, so we've got the question text. So this will, so one of the nice things about Gorilla is on the left, it's all the different settings. And on the right, it provides you a live preview of what it will look like within your questionnaire when it's finished. So for example, if we wanted to know what, uh, what someone's gender, and you can list all the different options you want separated by commas, and that will what will distinguish it. So for example, female, male, prefer not to say, and each one of these separated by a comma, and it provides us options on the right, so we can just tick a box and provide that as an answer. So you can also, if you want to just present people with other, and it will give them a free text box to add in what they like. And the nice thing is if we sort of add and take away, it automatically updates. One of the really important things to highlight is what's called a key. So this is when you get your data, um, it will prevent, uh, provide it in a, like an Excel spreadsheet. And the key is what your, this item in the spreadsheet will be called. So it's really important that you provide it with an informative name. So all we want is gender. And we know that in the gender column, this is what information is. So making sure that this is really clear. And if we also wanted to um, ask someone just how old they are, we can then have a, a text entry box. So this will let people enter one line of text. So for example, so all we want to know here is what is your age and years, and it will give people a free text box. And again, we've got the key. So all we need to do is age. And this is what our questionnaire will look like. So just because this is a demo, we're not gonna add anything else. So because you get so many options within here for the different types of widgets, um, like I said, for the radio buttons, it's not 
really clear at the start that this means uh, different options. So if you want to know a little bit more, if you go into the menu and the support, this will pop up in a different window. Um, one thing I'm not going to demonstrate, it's all the different things you can do with Gorilla. So they've done a really good job of outlining all the different things you can do with it. And for the different questionnaires, if we go onto the questionnaires side, there's one called Tooling References and Widgets. So if we go on here, um, they've got really extensive guidance on what all these mean. So if we click on radio buttons, it provides a definition of what it does and what happens for each of the prompts that it pr uh, provides you and, and it provides you with all the different information. So now that we're happy with this, we need to commit it. So this is what how we save it. So now this is pretty much set in stone. So this is what it looked like if we was to just uh, type it in. So this is not saving it. It's just for preview of what it'll look like. So if we go back into a test, we now have four different components. So we've almost got everything we need to just do a basic experiment. So one of the things I'm going to demonstrate now is the second type of component we can create, which is the task builder. So depending on what discipline you're in, is whether this is going to be um, applicable to you or not. A lot, of, um, a lot of you will just be able to use different forms of questionnaires. Um, but one of the other nice features about Gorilla is they have lots of samples we can use as well. And like the questionnaire, we can clone them to use ourselves. So they've got all different types of, because it's mainly uh, for a lot of psychology um, experiments, there's all different uh, things we use um, really often in psychology. Uh, so for example, one of the most well-known tasks in psychology is the Stroop task. So the idea is that you can respond to the font and it will either be consistent with uh, the word or inconsistent with the word. So red could either be written in red or it could be red written in green. And this difference in the font color um, creates what's called interference. So because reading is an automatic process, red written in red, you would process much more quickly than red written in green because you'd get the interference with the fonts color and the, the name color as well. So if we click on here, when you create different tasks, this is how it's laid out. So one of the things I'm not going to go into here is how you would actually go about creating this from scratch. Like I said, Gorilla has quite extensive guides on how you could do this. So I'm just going to show you through how you would go about creating a whole project and how everything fits in together here. So assuming that we want to use this, so if you was just testing it out yourself, you could go on preview task and it would show you what it would look like. Um, but because we're just going to use a demo, we're just going to clone it straight away. So we can just keep it as Stroop task, we don't need to rename that. And it's now within our project. So this is how it's, the task is structured. So it's lots of different screens. And if we is to preview this to what it would look like. So it gives us some instructions on what we need to press on the keyboard. And if we press space, we can do some practice. So red, green, yellow, like so. But if we go out of this, there are a few things I want to highlight. Rather than just using this um, immediately, we're just going to edit a couple of things. So when you create tasks, it's usually controlled by a spreadsheet. So this will, on a trial by trial basis, so when you start each task, the first trial it will lay out and it will guide through all the different windows that are outlined in the task structure. And we have a spreadsheet to determine when all of these are uh, referred to. And a sort of top tip to go forward when you're creating your own task is to make sure that the analysis is really easy for you. So we talked about it in the questionnaire when we um, outlined the key, but for the task themselves, it's also really important that you can make it really easy for you. So if you download the spreadsheet, it does it into an Excel for, um, file. So if we open this,
and this is how it is how it's saved. So we have the different windows and then the different trials and what it uses is different images and it tells you what the correct answer is um, but we're going to add a couple more variables to save when we actually get the data to make it easier for the analysis. So we've got one to indicate whether they're practice trials or not, something to make it really easy, and one to tell the congruency. So the idea behind the Stroop task is you respond faster when the font is consistent with the word. And if it's consistent, we know it's congruent. If it's inconsistent, we call it incongruent. And when we actually try and analyze the data for this, what we're comparing is the reaction time or the average reaction time to congruent stimuli in comparison to the incongruent stimuli. So it will make it really easy for us if we just tell um, Gorilla what is a congruent trial and what is an incongruent trial so we can sort by it later. So for each one of these, we're gonna input these. So one indicating that it's a practice trial, zero indicating it's not. So we want to keep all the zeros. Practice trials we don't really care about and whether it is congruent or not. So we need to look really carefully and see whether the, the font and the color is consistent or not. So this is consistent, this isn't, this isn't congruent. And congruent. So for each time the font matches the word, we put a one. For each time it's inconsistent, we put a zero. So we need to save this somewhere convenient in on our computer. So if for now we just save it on desktop. So we now need to edit this. So if we click on edit. And we can now upload our sort of modified spreadsheet. So if we go on upload, choose a file here, we've now got two extra columns. So now we know what's a practice trial, what's congruent, and it makes it really easy for us later on. So if we commit this, we now have this in place. So if we used to test this out properly, so because we won't get data at the end because we won't release it, it's really important that when you're developing your tasks and before you release it to your participants, you really test it out and make sure it's providing all the information that you want it to. So if we go on preview and launch, we'll go for this again. So what we need to do is memorize which key refers to which font color. So if we press space, it's red, red, blue. That's great. And we go, when we press continue, this will be the real trials. And this time it doesn't tell us whether we got it right or wrong or not. and it tells us how many we got right or wrong. So if we go next and finish, um, at the end, it gives us an option to download the data we just uh, from a task we just completed. So if we download this as um, an Excel file, this is what the eventual data will look like. So it gives you lots more information that you actually need. But what we really need to focus on here is we have whether it's correct or not. We have a different response. We have further along the congruency. And if we used to go about analyzing the data, what we need to do is focus just on the real trials, so get rid of all the practice trials. And then we want to know 
the average reaction time to congruent stimuli in comparison to incongruent stimuli. So I'm not going to go into this now just because we're still demonstrating, but for each of these screens we have uh, the response key and there is a specific column for reaction time and we would need to sort, um, sort it, take all the practice trials out and what we could do is sort it again by congruency and focus just on the response time um, sort of component within the task structure. And if we look at the average response time to one condition in comparison to the average response time to the other, uh, this will tell us what the difference is for the Stroop task. So if we go back to the editor, so we now have all the components in place for our experiment. So we've got four different questionnaires and one task. Um, but in order to put these together, we need to create an experiment. So if we go to the create button again, and there is a specific icon for experiment. And so we give it a name. And this essentially prevent, uh, presents us with a flowchart of how people move through the experiment. So like uh, all the other components, we need to edit it first. And this gives us a few options. So it provides us with the start and finish. So participants come in at this point, leave at this point. So we need to tell Gorilla what we want them to do throughout the experiment. So if we move the finish point down here, we need to insert all our different questionnaires in the order we want participants to complete them. So like everything else, if you go onto the support, so for a menu and the, and the support um, button, there are some more advanced features you can do. So for example, you can randomize people into different conditions. Um, you can get them to repeat this complete, um, repeatedly. So you can perform like a longitudinal experiment. But for now, we're just going to assume that participants are just completing it once. Um, so we need to add the different nodes. So if we click on here, and we can choose from all these different types of nodes, but we re just really need the questionnaires and tasks that we've created before. So if we click on questionnaire, and this will give us a breakdown of everything we've got in the project. So first things first, we want participants to see the information sheet. So if we put this in place, so it doesn't matter where you put it because what we need to do is drag from the start point the route you want participants to take throughout the experiment. So if we add another node to questionnaire. So the next thing we want participants to see is the consent form. So just because there's a limited space, we're sort of staggering these. So we want from participants to go from the information sheet to the consent form. One more questionnaire. So we now want them, now we, we know the participants know what they're doing in the experiment. We've recorded their consent. We can start actually asking some questions. So now we've got our demographics. So from consent form to demographics. And after this, we can present the participants with our Stroop task, which will be nicely color coded. So from the demographics to the Stroop task. And finally, once we've completed everything, we provide them with a debrief to explain what the real aims of the experiment was. So from a Stroop task to the debrief, and then the debrief to finish. So at this point, after participants have been informed what you was really interested in, they can then finish, uh, click OK, and all the data will be saved. So once we're happy with this, we've got our experiment structure. We can commit this. So because we're just starting off, it doesn't have to be super detailed description because we're just creating the initial version. And this is the first version of our experiment. So we've created all the individual components. We've now put them together in the correct order that we want. 
and we can now look at what it will look like. So again, it's really important that you test and test again, making sure that everything is doing what you want before you actually get any of your real participants. You don't want them to waste, uh, you don't want to waste their time by giving them a sort of broken experiment and you don't want to waste your own time by getting less information that you bargained for. So started off with the information sheet. So this is how it would look to the participants. So once we get the task, um, this is how it will look to them. But because this is a template, it's not really informative. And we can go next. We now get the consent form. So once we're happy with we know what the experiment's about, we can press that we confirm that we consent to participate. We get our brief questionnaires, um, our brief question, sorry. Next. We get our Stroop task again. So just to go through it really quickly. So now for the real trials. So I forgot which buttons are which, so I didn't do very well on that one. So this is what will be the last screen people see. So if we click on next, finish. So that was the end of the experiment. So people will now see the debrief sheet. So these are the aims, um, provide them any relevant journal, uh, journal articles that you, they may be interested in for future reference. And if they click next, this would be the point where the data would be saved and you can access all the different, um, all the different nodes individually. So assuming that everything was correct, so everything was recording like we wanted it to, participants could go from start to finish exactly how you wanted. We can then think about how we'd actually get this release to your participants and start getting some data. So within the experiment, we have these four different tabs. So we've got the design here where we've just outlined our um, trial structure or experiment structure. And we can now think about how we'd go about recruiting participants. So if we go on here, so because we've only just created it, we can't, it's not set to collect data from anyone yet. So there are a few things to highlight on here. So there's different requirements. So if you only wanted people to complete this on their, on a computer, you could restrict it to just a computer, not a laptop, um, not a tablet or phone. So for example, if we really cared about the accuracy of re uh, response times, like the Stroop task. So if we to go on here, we could limit the device type to just a desktop or laptop. So this would tell people when they go onto the task that they should only be doing this on a computer. We can set a time limit. So we don't want people clicking on sort of losing interest and it will kick them out after an X amount of time. So think about roughly how long you expect participants to take make sure that they would have enough time. So for example, this one, it should take no longer than 10 minutes. So if we're if they're on here for more than 30 minutes, um, they would get kicked off the experiment, it would time out and they would be rejected. So we also need to tell Gorilla how many participants we want to collect from. So although we've got unlimited with our license, um, you don't want unlimited participants just because it's going to take too long. Um, so you would put how many you would do for your experiment. So for this one, if we start off with 40, so this means that only 40 people could log on to the experiment and complete it. Everything after the 40th um, sort of valid response would just be bounced. So they, if they tried to access the link, it would just say, sorry, this experiment is full, please contact the researcher. So assuming that we want to collect 40 participants, we now have 40 spaces available, but it's still disabled because we need to tell Gorilla how we want to recruit people. So if we go on here, there are different ways around it. So you can put a, just a link where we can just get a hyperlink and share it. We could enter people's emails and it would send them an invite directly. So if you want a very specific uh, demographic, you know exactly who your participants are. 
Um, if you've got some funding and you want to use a recruitment service, so for example, Prolific is a good source for uh, recruiting participants. Um, you could integrate Gorilla with Prolific and you can pay participants to complete your study, um, get faster sign up and some good quality data. Um, but for now, all we're going to do is create a simple link. So if we're just going low, low tech, sharing uh, the hyperlink on a poster or through an, through an email you send out or put on social media, we will just get a link we can see. And it will give a sort of description of what you will get and any warnings for people that might be useful. So for example, people could just click clicking on the link and they will just be treated as a new participant and there's nothing stopping them completing it multiple times. So as long as you're aware of the risks, you're welcome to use it. So use this policy. And we now have a link and the experiment is up and running. So this will show um, live your sort of recruiting status. So we still have 40 places. If we used to then share this link on our social media, on an email, on a poster, people could access it, complete it, and it will break down the sort of complete valid responses, people who are currently do it as you're watching, and any who have been rejected, and it will give you a breakdown of why they was rejected as well. So for example, it could be that they just timed out. So if they last more than 30 minutes, um, it would um, show you how many had rejected. If any have accessed it after we've got our 40 participants to see how many more, or if we outline different policies as well. So because we don't have any date yet, we actually can't see what the date will look like. But the participants one will show you a breakdown of every participant, their sort of status, um, at what point they dropped out. Um, but then for the data, it will look like when we started designing the project. So we get a breakdown of all the different nodes and this allows us to download each node separately. So if we want our demographics, so if you want to know what people's gender and age were, we can click on here and for our different options we can click on. So whether we want it as a long or short form, so long meaning that we get one row per trial and short meaning we get one row per participant. So depending on how you want the data laid out, we would then generate the data because we have none, it's not going to give us anything. But when you get more data, you click generate and it will let you download from the top. Um, if you then get additional data on top of that, it will tell you that your X number of participants um, out of date. So you can regenerate it and download the most up-to-date version. And the same for the Stroop task. We can only get long form data here. So one row per trial and we can generate that and download it. And that's a point where you'd start analyzing data and seeing what conclusions you can make from it. So hopefully that is a sort of decent overview of how everything fits together in Gorilla. So as a final point, if you're ever stuck, you can go on the support tab and there are so many videos and guides on how you can use the different parts. But what I thought would be useful is this, this video explaining how everything fits together. So how you can think about what you need for each individual experiment. And then you can now focus on if you need have any questions on how to make a specific type of component. So if you want to know um, how you'd create a particular question type, how you could create a different task, um, if you want to download or, and clone any sample tasks, you can then think about that. So hopefully this was a little bit useful.